What's up guys? Today we're going to take a closer look at the Nikon ZF. I've got it here in my hands and let's see if the camera will focus on it. We're filming with the A6700. I might have to turn face tracking off for this video because I want to really look at the camera and I'm not sure that it's going to want to. But we've got the 26mm f2.8 lens here on the camera. I really like the build quality of this camera. So you got brass dials up here. You got a magnesium chassis. You got a pretty nice grip actually. I've heard everybody talk bad about the grip, but I think it's really comfortable with a small pancake lens like this. Uh, I wouldn't want to use this with a huge telephoto lens, but I am going to get a grip for it. So it's not going to be that bad. I like the handling. The dials work really well for me. You can, you can put it on auto ISO, but it's a little bit different than how Fuji does it. So we've got that PASM dial over here. So yeah, PASM, P-S-A-M, but it's upside down. Manual's on top, and I like to keep it in manual most of the time, or aperture priority. Maybe shutter priority if I was gonna shoot wildlife or something like that. Uh, I like that it has the exposure compensation dial there too. I like that you can switch to black and white with a switch uh, back here on the back. So yeah, I wish it had a switch to go into slow motion video, like the A6700 that we're filming on now. So yeah, besides that, it doesn't really slow the, the motion down in camera. Um, yeah, it's, it's just beautiful to look at. It's a very attractive camera. I've got the strap on it. I've never really used a strap with a camera before, but this is actually a pretty small camera and I like using it with the strap. It's sort of heavy, but it's not that heavy for a full frame camera. It still feels pretty small to me. It's got a nice big viewfinder. I like the viewfinder and I do definitely like the screen. Let's put the, uh, let's see, let's put the menu on the screen just to show you guys how big and beautiful that screen is. It's so much bigger than what I'm used to on a lot of mirrorless cameras. And the viewfinder is also very big and bright. And I really like it. It feels like a professional camera to me. It feels like it's gonna last a long time. It's built well. I think the weather ceiling is great and the ports are really great on the side, the way they do that. I like that it has two card slots. I don't care that one is a micro. Uh, SD card because it works exactly the same. The battery's big. It lasts a long time. Uh, I think it has a good amount of custom buttons. I'm not going to need that many custom buttons. It's got good, you know, touch screen and everything like that. So far, I my favorite thing about it is the actual usability and the handling, how it feels in the hand. It inspires me to take photos. It makes me feel good about the photos that I'm taking. And I like that the lenses are kind of small, this lens and the 40 millimeter that I'm gonna be doing a video about soon. Really small, lightweight lenses. I'd rather have a heavy body with a lightweight lens than a lightweight body with a heavy lens, for sure. Like with the Viltrox 27 that, we've, that we're filming on right now, that is really awful to film with or use all day but I think we're gonna switch over to this camera and do the rest of the video with this camera so I can kind of compare it to the a6700 so I want to compare the video between the a6700 and the Fuji this is the a6700 this is Sony right here Sony's colors I tend to be a little more even toned. I don't know if it applies something to the skin where it evens out the tone so I don't have these red blotchy spots that I tend to have with Nikon and Canon and Fuji. Fuji makes me kind of orange though too, but blotchier. Sony really does something weird to the skin tone and it makes it even. I, I really think they're doing something to it because it's the only camera that does that. So I just turned all the sharpening down on the standard picture profile and now I look like this little pink squishy squish. like. I am so pink on this camera. Wow, that really isn't sharp. I guess I have to turn it to zero. All right, so I turn the contrast up and I turn the sharpness back up a little bit. We're in the standard picture profile. Do I need to like make it more saturated maybe? How does that look? Seems like I get a lot more shadows on Nikon. Seems like I get a lot more shadows on my face and just unevenness and blotchiness on Nikon. 
Maybe cameras can do a better job when it's like a tighter shot of your face. Look how blotchy my skin is compared to Sony. So one thing I don't like about the Nikon ZF is I was filming in a different format and my computer couldn't open the files. So I switched to MP4. So hopefully my computer will be able to open the files from today because the other files I had to edit on my phone. My phone was the only thing that could handle them. So I look, so I look pretty good. I look more pale on here than I do on the Sony. I'm kind of tan right now, you know? It's definitely making me look pale. So I guess when I turn clarity down, it's kind of like adding a black pro mist filter to the front of the lens. When I turn contrast up, my beard turns black and my hair turns black really quickly. Why do I look so desaturated today? Maybe I should go outside and film. So one thing I complained about on here a little bit was that you couldn't slow down the slow motion in camera. Well, I found out that wasn't true. Uh, there are settings in here where you can slow down the slow motion in camera, you know, five times slow motion, stuff like that. And it films the clip in slow motion. You can upload it straight to your phone or camera. Or like, well, you can upload it straight to your phone or computer in slow motion. Why is my beard so dark? My beard is not quite that dark in real life. So this is not bad for vlogging. The Ibis is pretty good. I, I don't know, it looks good on the screen, but I don't know. My skin looks a little lighter on here than it actually is, and the background looks darker. I don't usually stand out that much against this park, but yeah, this is standard with the contrast and saturation turned down a little bit. So I think it looks kind of good. What do you guys think? I'm about to do just a full video testing the IBIS. What's up guys? Today we're going to test out the Nikon ZF. We're going to test the IBIS and the vibration compensation, the, the electronic stabilization. So right now we've got the electronic stabilization and the IBIS going. This is the 26 millimeter F 2.8 on the ZF and I'm walking I'm holding the camera on a small tripod. It's kind of low light. The sun's about to go down even though it's been raining today. The sun wasn't really out. So how does that look? Let me know in the comment section below and then I'll test it with the electronic stabilization off. So I think everything looks good on this camera, except me. Like the skate park looks awesome on this camera. The lens almost has some like vignetting going on. I feel like that's why it kind of looks cool out here. Let's see if we can see it in the sky. There's like some vignetting. I've got the vignetting turned off, but it almost seems like it either adds a little vignetting or this lens just adds that vignetting in the corners because it has this like really dark look behind me and the center of the lens seems to be brighter. So what do you guys think? Is that in the lens or is that the camera adding some like artificial vignetting? Yeah, I mean the colors look good. Skateboard looks good. Skate around in the rain a little bit. Skate park just looks awesome with this camera and this lens in the rain. Let's skate around a little bit and see if I can get a stable shot on the skateboard. So, oh gosh, I should be able to stand on the skateboard. I wasn't looking. I have like 30 something years experience skateboarding. 
and I make income skateboarding. <laughs> so, yeah, this looks awesome. Everything looks so great except for me. Maybe, maybe that's just how I look. But on Sony, I look so much better. I don't know why. I just gotta figure it out. Sony just lies. It makes me look more handsome than I really am. The skate park looks awesome today on this camera. This is a perfect day to come out here and film this. So this is my rain setup. So I've got trucks and wheels that are already kind of rusted. The bearings are already rusty. This is what I ride just in the rain. So I'm starting to think maybe the screen just has a little more detail. Cause I remember I thought I looked really green in the screen the other day, but when I uploaded the video, it looked very similar to the Sony. But yeah, I definitely look pale for some reason today. And like overly sharpened, even when I turn that sharpening down. The 26 millimeter definitely is not flattering for my face compared to like a 40 millimeter equivalent. But I think there's something else going on here. Just the colors and everything's a little bit different, a little less warm, everything's kind of cool. At least on the screen it is. So now we're at rich portrait tone, so looks pretty similar. I think the white balance looks a little bit better now. I think it's because that light came on, so that kind of warms everything up. So now we're in dream. It's kind of like a weird oversaturated log profile. I do look better though <laughs> for some reason. I look like I'm alive now, I'm like not like a zombie. <laughs> Maybe I look better in the in these kind of profiles. Why? So now we're in the regular portrait picture profile. I almost look like I'm filming on a Panasonic camera. Like I've got that peach tone. You see that? Maybe Nikon has a similar color science to Panasonic. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through my channel, check out my other videos, and hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching.